accompaniment a lot. And for us, it's a word that's very important. It is an antidote to just simply sharpening your claws in a social Darwinist framework. Accompaniment means you stand with the poorest of the poor, you stand with your neighbor, you help one another, you participate with the community, you participate with the sectors that are going to help the poorest of the poor. But accompaniment is saying we're not all in competition with one another for scarce resources. That working together in partnership, we can achieve more than we could alone. And so for us, that is how we see Shemin La Vigne, is the softening of society and the bringing about of humanity through partnership, goodness, and accompaniment, through addressing the reality alongside with the people in the community. The idea that we give grants to these families based on what their community thinks they need, that it within that is a series of teaching and training and accompaniment and joint learning. Within that is assurance that the children will be in school, that medical uh, care will be free, and, and all of those things are the package, which is really like, I'm sorry to say, a great big hug <laughs> to people who need it. You see, I'm a Harvard professor, but I don't really believe that I need to see the data either. So um, the fact is, this is quite obvious, and you can see it in the faces of the people we serve. So for us, this has been a partnership that has shown a path toward Haiti's future. A path that really is something that, in my view, is very rooted in the Haitian psyche which we talked about a lot after the earthquake as the strength of Negmawa. <laughs> when I arrived in Haiti on January 13th of 2010, I said to one of our drivers, a person who's a good friend, who's taking good care of my son, who's four and has driven on many of those bad roads, I said, Kote Negmawa, where is the statue? And he said, Lila, 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 Lila. Ned Mahon is a statue of the free man. It means in Creole at once the free man, the runaway slave, and the marooned man. And in fact, one of the great heroes of the Haitian Revolution is Ned Mahon. Ned Mahon represents something so important in Haiti which is this person who represents all of us, who fought against slavery, who escaped slavery, and was so brave as to blow a conch to call his brothers and sisters to freedom, not to hide, not to run away, but call people to work together. Men en pile, shai palo. Working together, we are strong. And so we, throughout the earthquake, put on our jackets and our t-shirts just the image of Ned Mama. And we stopped at the statue, my, my friend and I, and I got out of the car to take a picture of this statue standing totally intact in front of the palace that was collapsed with the giant Haitian flag at half-mast people already gathering and bathing their children and trying to figure out what to do on Sean Mouse. And I started crying. And an old woman came, a Haitian woman, and she tapped me on the shoulder. And I said, Ned Mao toujours campé. He's still standing. And she said, Sherry, Ned Mao pas jamais crazy. will never be defeated. The free woman will never be defeated. And what we are talking about in this partnership is freedom. It's freedom through development, freedom through community, freedom through interdependency. Not dependency, interdependency. 
And this is why for us it has been such a great honor and pleasure to see Chemin La Vigneux grow and to see this idea of mutual interdependency, accompaniment, really tap into the spirit of the people of Haiti. So since I'm not Paul Farmer, <laughs> I will tell you my small anecdote, which will lead to singing, <laughs> which is this. For those of you who don't know, I hope all of you do, but for those of you who don't know, Haiti was the first and only republic that was founded by a slave revolution. The slaves in Haiti beat three, not one, not two, three superpowers in the same year, France, England, and Spain. And it struck such fear in the hearts of the slave traders in the hearts of the slave owners that Haiti and the Haitian Revolution really was the beginning of the end for the transatlantic slave trade. <laughs> Haitians know this. It's my Haitian friends who've taught me this. And this history has been interestingly erased from the consciousness of most of the world. that all of us know, and I'm sure the choir knows it well as well, which was written by a man named John Newton. And the song is Amazing Grace. John Newton was a slave trader. After he had made his money in human bondage, he went into a, a monastery and he saw the truth. Realizing the error of his ways became an abolitionist. And he wrote this song. And for us, to me, the key part of this song is not his goodness, but him realizing that he himself and society itself was blind. And that it was Haiti and the dignity of Haitian people and Africans that stood up for their rights that changed the world. And we owe, as free people, such a great debt to Haiti. So I will end by just singing the first verse, which many of you know. And you will join <laughs> 